uh, interfaces uh, and abstract classes can declare methods um, which throw exceptions. So, no surprise there. And um, it's quite common for um, an abstract method in an interface or uh, abstract class um, to throw quite a broad um, range of exceptions. And um, expecting, of course, that uh, any implementing classes are going to be more specific. Um, also, when uh, an, an interface um, extends other interfaces, um, a method, of course, may override one or more methods in different super interfaces because you can um, you can extend more than one interface. Now, um, the throw throws clauses. Um, have to be compatible whenever a method uh, is overridden or um, implemented. So that covers both of those two cases. All right. Now um, there's something else. If, a, if the um, return type of a method is um, not primitive or void, okay, a, an overriding method doesn't have to return exactly the same type. Now it, it could return a subtype of that type. And of course this is going to be okay because um, the overriding method could be used wherever the original was because it's just a, a subtype that's being passed in. Now, I've been careful to use the word subtype here because of course um, the uh, method uh, could return an interface. An interface type is, is perfectly valid. Now um, uh, it, it said that the um, overriding method, by the way, has, has a covariant return type. That's a technical term. Um, now, another situation that can arise is um, when uh, you inherit, um, and um, when you've got an interface and it inherits from several other interfaces, uh, the same method or method which is an um, override equivalent is, is what the term is. So it's basically the same. Um, the method there has got to have um, the methods there have got to have compatible return types, and I, I'll explain what I mean in the, the next slide. Okay, now uh, let's just have a look at uh, uh, what this implies. Um, here we've got a class um, which extends um, this uh, class E1. That's an exception. It extends uh, Java IO exception there. And E2 is extend, extends that, so it's um, a subclass. Of course, exceptions, by the way, have got to be classes. They can't be interfaces because they've all got to be. They've all got a subclass, something called um, uh, throwable, and that's a class. Okay, uh, right. Here's uh, interface I1, and it returns a it returns type I1 and throws I/O exception. Uh, interface i9 just extends i1 and uh, here we got uh, interface i2 and the overriding method there or it's not overriding actually because it's uh, uh, there's no extends clause in here so it's just a completely uh, separate version of that basically throws i exception e and E1 as well. And here we've got interface I3 which extends all of them and uh, it returns I3 and throws E2. Right now at this point we're going to get a check will get triggered. Um, everything's fine up to here and at this point the compiler will trigger a check here to make sure that uh, first of all the return types are compatible. So it checks that I3 is a subtype of I9, which it is, extends it, and it checks that I3 is also a subtype of I1, and again it is because it extends it, so that's okay. Then it checks the throws clause and makes sure that E2 is a uh, sub uh, class of one of those two, and it is in fact, of course, a subclass of both of them. So that's okay. And it checks that uh, E2 again is a subclass of IO exception.
there, which of course it is because that extends e2 and that extends that. So that's fine. And that uh, works and compiles.